This is Knowsley on Merseyside, home to around 150,000 residents. And out of 317 local authorities in England, Knowsley is the second most deprived in the country. This is the new Hot Centre, a community space run by former Labour councillor Gary C. It runs groups for local people, offers free hot meals to those who need them, and runs a social supermarket where people can pick up everyday staples at reduced prices. Where does all this come from? It comes from a variety of places. Um, but if I'm being really honest, we're really struggling now because there is a lot of organisations similar to what we do who are all going to the same people for the same stuff. Oh, it's the first thing you notice, it's so warm in here, Gary. You like the warmth. It's lovely. In 2020, pandemics, let's take November 2020. Yeah. How many people were you helping? You... So just, just over 150 people right. in, in November 2020. 2020. So a year ago, 2021? So a year ago, we were just over 700. In November 2021? November. And November this year? 1,193. So what's going on? People's need is growing. This is a solution. This is not a food bank where people get given things. This is an opportunity for people to choose what they want. Yeah. But obviously get at a greatly reduced price, but sure. the same quality as you would get in a supermarket. Right there. Steph's got two children, age six and one. She works part-time in customer service. Merry Christmas! Tonight, the family are going to the neighbourhood's free Christmas event. So basically, this is something that Kiowa community put on for our kids every year. You know, they bring Santa out, they bring the elves, the Grinch. With it being a free event, it's so easy just to come out onto your doorstep with the kids allowing them to see Santa, you know, because we can't all afford to go and go to a pay for a grotto. Data given to Newsnight shows that 86% of single parent families have reported going without essentials in the last month. Over 50% of those households said family members had gone hungry. And almost a quarter of single parents who are renting said they were in arrears. Steph uses the food hub at Gary's Centre, but even with that help, things are hard. So how are you getting on, Steph? What would you oh, say? Um, surviving. Surviving? Surviving. Is that what it feels like? Sometimes, yeah. Like, beginning of the month's not as bad, but then obviously the end of the month before you get your payday, it's, it's breadline. Do you find that you are running out of money by the end of the month then? So, you know, you could have anywhere from between, like, 25 up to your last pound. You've got a beautiful home. And some people might look at it and go, it can't be that bad, Steph. What would you say to them? Everything that I've got is, comes from when I did work full time and when I did have a partner and he worked full time. And everything that we got was, it came with me. Um, so, yeah, they don't see that. And they don't see when, you know, when I've missed a payment on my card and I'm like trying to get the money back together just to be out of arrears to try and fix, fix the situation. And you would like to work full time, five days a week, but actually you can't afford to because the childcare is so expensive. It's £50 a day for, for what I pay childcare. It's still a lot. It's still a lot of money for a mum who's single, who wants to work, who wants to work full time, but it's just not, you just can't. It's, you can't do it. Mm. It's not, um, it's not you, affordable. You can't. You, no, so you can't afford to work full time no. because even working full time, mm. you would not be able to afford yeah. 50 quid a day, five days a yeah. week, four weeks a month yeah. to, for the childcare. Do you spend a lot of time thinking about how you could make things better? And I said sometimes I think, you know, well, I'll get rid of my car. I'll, you know, I'll reckon, like, get rid of that, not, not have that. And then I think, well, that's me lifeline as well. That's how I get to work. It's how I get the shot. Sometimes I walk around with my calculator. I'm like, you know, well, I don't need to get that. So I'll just get this, this, this. Mm. Or, and then I've got my son going, Mom, can I have this? And you're like, 
No. In terms of energy costs going up, in terms of food costs going up, how, how are you managing all that? I'm on a prepay meter. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's a lot harder to manage because, you know, if I've, if I've only got, you know, a £20 by the end of the month for my electric or gas goes, then I have to use some of that to, to put back in. And it's so expensive. Like, it's, it's, it's at a point where you are scared to put your heating on. You are scared to, you know, have your hob on for longer than five minutes if, you, if you're cooking something. One, two... Three. 68-year-old Linda also gets help from the centre. She goes to the free food club for a hot meal and she uses the social supermarket. Linda is a mum of two. Good morning. Linda, she's got ten grandchildren and she's got four great-grandchildren. Are we going in here? Yeah. yeah. How tough are things for you right now, would you say? I only live on my pension. That's all I have, my pension, which is £700 a month. Um, so I do like my gas, my lecky, my water, my poll tax. I've got a life insurance. Food. Food, yeah, food. Have you considered trying to get pension credit? Yeah, I did try. I tried when I first come, when I retired two years ago, I tried on the phone. And they said, unfortunately, you don't qualify because you're 29 pence over due to the pension going up. What are the things that you are having to cut back on? Food, obviously. Um, two meals a day. If I'm really hungry, I'll eat three. Um, heating. I used to have the heating on if I was in most of the day all around the house. Whereas now, I just keep it to one room of a night. I have it on an hour of a morning um, and an hour tea time. I used to go to the bingo three times a week, so now I only go once a week. I see you. Data given to Newsnight by Age UK found that over 60% of the over 60s say they've cut back on heating their homes. 35% say they've cut back on food to make ends meet. Have you ever known things to be as tough as this? No, never. It gets tough, I don't get upset, mm. I used to. I used to get upset. And then I said, well, what's the use of crying? Because, you know, life's life's life. Back at the centre, Gary's getting ready to go on his rounds. So where are we going, Gary? What are we doing? What's this man used for? So we are going out now to visit a couple of older people um, that we uh, know from the work that we do are struggling with the cold at the moment. So we're supplying uh, electric blankets. And where do you get your funding from? So we are lucky at the moment that we get a substantial amount of funding through the local authority. Right. So we've recently been given £60,000, which will get us through till March okay. time. So who pays for you? Who pays for the stuff that you're delivering to people? So we're, again, fortunate that we get support from bigger funders who are philanthropists. The rest of it is volunteers. Is there an individual, is there a family that have really stuck in your mind that you've helped in the last few months? We was in the local leisure centre and we were doing activities with the children as part of the half provision to feed children with a nice activity. And I'd noticed this family had come for a few days consecutively and just through conversation with mum, my initial conversation was about the food and thinking that was the only thing she needed. And what she said to me was that she was happy because the children had been able to get a wash. And so they were going for a swim so they could get clean? Yeah. For, that was her motivation? Mum's purpose was to take the children to get fed, but most importantly get washed. She couldn't afford to heat the water at home. Hello, Anne. Hello, Anne. How are you? Yes, we're going to try to get 
hold of the electric blanket. So mm. this is one for you, which I know oh. we were talking about. Oh, thank you very much. And I know... This would be lovely. Will it make I'll a difference? I'll never get a house in bed at all now. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> Does it make you angry? I'm angry because I want to live in a country where we do look after one another and we support one another, which is why we do what we do as an organisation. But we used to do these things, you know, many years ago, because it was nice to do it, it was fun to do it, it was about our community coming together. Right now, our community's coming together because it's facing some of the most dire situations it could ever face. So my anger comes from a passion and a desire to make sure people have got what they need. If we didn't, my fear is, what would, what would happen to these people?